Hey guys, welcome back. <clears throat> this is my fifth try now, I think, at making this video. But, uh, I think I finally have everything set. So I guess I'll dive into what I was gonna do, because I've delayed 12 seconds already. So today I wanted to demonstrate how dangerous batch files can really be. Now, I wrote this batch file myself. And if you know me, you'd know that I don't have a whole lot of experience with coding languages. My most experienced language is batch computing by a mile. I have extremely limited experience in JavaScript, and I haven't even touched C++. So all my knowledge is in batch computing. And I was able to whip up this pain in the neck without a ton of difficulty, although I did have a little bit of difficulty with the copy syntax, but that's whatever. So um, I'm not going to show the source code for it because I'm entering into the realm of potentially unwanted programs, and it would be... It was, it'd be irresponsible of me to show you the source code for this because anyone can do this. However, I just don't think that people respect the amount of stuff you can do with a batch file. And the worst part about this batch file is it doesn't even require elevation. It does everything on an unelevated platform because for some reason the startup directory does not require elevation to move stuff into it, which is one of the payloads. As you can see right now, startup's empty. However, when we run this, it'll be a very different story. So here we go. So you can see what happens is it tries to lag the system by opening up tons of command windows. So at this point in time, I'm, I'm right-clicking here, nothing's happening. Insert control, control delete I don't think I can get anything going. So you can see the system's totally overloaded. You can't do anything with this. This is absolutely useless. So what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to reset, right? That's what any normal user would do, so let's just go ahead and reset it. It looks like we did get Kim control panel to come up. Oh my god, control panel? Looks like it did get control delete to come up, but after I reset the system. Probably because it just paused and killed itself. Alright, so let's boot back into Windows here. And now you'll see upon a successful boot into Windows, it does the same thing again. So, this batch file ran without elevation, and it just does this over and over again. I can show you the singular payload for it once I uh, take care of it. Because in of itself, it's not that special of a payload, it's just there to take up space. Now the one thing I don't understand is I tried to get this to start in maximize mode to be a jerk, but it doesn't want to do it. <clears throat> However, this is more than obnoxious enough. I'm going to boot one more time and instantly start up the uh, process explorer just to show you how many processes it gets going. And then I'm going to show you how to remove it, because it's very simple. Although for some people, it might not be as simple as I make it out to be. Not to say that it's bad to not be computer savvy, I'm just saying a lot of people aren't. So anyways, I'm going to try and get a control to eat in as soon as we boot into Windows. Alright, here we go. So this is the process listing. Take a look at this. <clears throat> it's lagging so hard most of them aren't changing the title even, let alone getting to the main payload. As you can see, CPU usage is high, although I'm not sure how much of that is because of this program. I imagine a good chunk of it has to do with um, SVC host, which has been a pain in my rear end for a long time. So the main problem is that it just eats up all your CPU, and you really can't do anything. I also have the program running on high priority, just to take more resources, because why not? But overall, this would be a pain in the neck if you didn't know what you are doing. Now, like I said, removal's pretty easy. The only problem is I have to mash F8, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get it on the first try. So let's see if I can get this on the first try. Yes, this will happen eventually too. It'll launch so many it won't even initialize. And it'll start making tons of noise. So let's see if I can uh see if I can get into safe mode here. There we go. I think I did it, did I? I don't think I did it right. No, I don't think I did it right. I think I mashed F8 too early. There we go. So my recommended course of action would be to go safe mode with command prompt because I'm just going to do everything straight from a command prompt, it'll be easy. I'm not going to delete the uh, desktop version because I want to modify that and show you its raw payload without starting up a thousand windows. So anyways, let's load into windows here for safe mode. So here's our command prompt. So what I did was I dropped it in the startup directory. Uh, programs and I think it's CD startup. So as you can see, currently, there it is, right in the startup directory. Clear as crystal. Removal is as easy as deleting it. 
and I just reset. There's no registry keys going on here, it's that simple. It seriously is an extremely primitive virus, it would probably, or not virus, Jesus, Trevor. Um, Trojan, because it's not a file infector, that would mess with quite a lot of people. Because the level of computer, the level of competence I've seen out of some people, it wouldn't surprise me if they couldn't figure out how to fix this. I mean, it gave me a pain in the neck because I couldn't figure out where to press F8 because it never came up to like press F8 to boot into this. Also, I can I can show you this running with a um, antivirus if you want. It will have no effect. Antivirus programs search basically listings, and I don't think my homebrew would be on their listing. So, anyways, I'm gonna go in there and mess with the source code real quick and show you just the raw payload without any new windows. All right, that was easy. Let's just do it. So here's the raw payload. This is all it's supposed to do is just flash a ton of colors. Now execution on Windows 7 is a little different, and I've actually thought of ways I can make the Trojan work across different operating systems. As for now, it only works on XP, but if I were to use a jump command, I actually have something I could show you that would make it work on both. So currently, I'm just going to re-inject my code real quick because I'm lazy. There we go. All right, so currently, um. Alright, here we go. So, so, in the environment variables, you can see one environment variable that's very useful to me. Um, where is it? All users profile. Now, the reason this is useful to me is because on every single Windows operating system, the all users profile should be consistent for the given OS. Now, on this operating system, the all users profile is listed as C documents and settings all users. So if I were to surround that in quotations and then surround that entire phrase in quotations and say, if this equals this, go to this, then I could do a jump command. It's very simple. I could say, if um, all users profile, I think is the name of the environment variable. Yeah. Oh, whoops, made a mistake already. In quotes, because there's a ton of spacing in there, is equal to, in quotes, C documents and settings. Um, I think it's all users, and that go to uh, WinXP, and then I just have WinXP would be the start of that thing that I did there, and then the thing is it's consistent on both 7 and XP because it also exists on my Windows 7 operating system. Take a look. This is this is for <laughs> this is for Windows 7. See it up here, all users profile is just C program data. And this is consistent across all Windows 7 operating systems. So it's a workaround because I was thinking I could do something as simple as OS, but as you can clearly see, OS is Windows NT and OS is Windows NT. So it's the same thing, so that wouldn't help at all. So that would be how I would make it work across multiple operating systems because the usage of an consistent environment variables across multiple operating systems. It's definitely not the intended usage of the all users profile environment variable, but you could do it that way. I imagine there are other ways you could do it too, but I just saw that one and it looked like the easiest. See, like the reason I wouldn't want to use app data is because it has the uh, username in there. So that would be a huge pain. Because I think, eh, no, that'd be way too much of a pain. It'd be easier to find something else. Maybe common program files? Let's see if it's consistent across both. Do -do -do. I can find the first one. Common program files. And that's consistent across both operating systems. Wouldn't be able to differentiate. So there you go. That's the that's the lowdown for the color dot bat trojan. Now this was extremely simple for me to make. And the lesson is simple. Be careful. Any file can be dangerous in the right hands. People might not take batch files seriously, but they can really be dangerous. Just as dangerous as your usual executable or even a command file. You're still using an operating system that uses command files. Dot com. That'd be very odd, but I I do remember actually reading about people using dot com files in uh, emails to trick people. Because they type in, go to this link, and it'd be www.whatever.com. And they'd follow the link thinking it was a link, but really it was actually a command file. Because it still worked until, like, XP, I think. I don't... I actually don't know if it might not work on this operating system. I might have to take a look for that for a future video. 
Actually, let's look it up on Wikipedia right now, because now it's going to kill me if I don't know. Do, do, do. Why did I Google for Wikipedia? I'm dumb. Not command files. Yeah, it's just referring to them as batch files, so I guess they're the same thing then. Let's try a different thing. Maybe, maybe I'm not doing it right. .com file. .com file. Here we go. Let's maximize this. Is this simple executable? Um, let's see the last one it worked on. Platform support. Still executable on many modern Windows-based operating systems, but it is run on an MS-DOS emulating subsystem. It's not present in 64-bit variants, so it would work on this 32-bit variant of Windows XP. Um, it, can be a, it can be executed on a DOS box. Probably be fine on this. Probably fine on my DOS uh, virtual machine. So yeah, so that would still work on Windows XP as long as it's 32-bit, which I guess there might have been 64-bit versions of XP, but maybe I've never heard of them. Anyways, I'm I'm getting off uh, I'm getting off the topic a little bit. So there we go. I dragged that out for 11 minutes and 13 seconds. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, be sure to drop a line in the comments. And otherwise, have a nice day.